for a, for our audience who doesn't know? Yes, you've been with us a very long time, and uh, she's actually a, a very uh, important part in biogeometry too. She has a lot of experience in there. Oh, thank you very much. It's it's an honor to to have become involved with it and learn about it. And uh, I'm very sensitive to radiation myself, so this has been very important for me. So I want to thank you. Well, thank you for being with us. So biosignatures are linear diagrams that enter into resonance with the patterns of energy flow in the body organs. They are conceptually similar to the meridians of Chinese acupuncture, except that biosignatures relate to the shape of the organ while the meridians are related to the overall shape of the body. The organ subtle energy patterns are accessed through biosignatures placed externally in the body's energy fields to create connection through resonance of shape. Biosignatures are activated by the body's peripheral energy channeled through these special shapes that simulate the electrical path of different functions of different body organs. The flow of energy through the patterns enters into resonance with the function of the organ they represent as similar patterns at tune, much like the tuning of musical instruments, causing a harmonic amplification which restores the correct balance within the organ. This correction is instantaneous on the energy level. This is uh, uh, people at home uh, and uh, anybody listening, you can uh, listen to it again as many times as you need because you'll be able to go back on, on the recording of this. That is quite a fascinating uh, thing that you have discovered there in your science of biogeometry. And how did this whole invention come about? And you will be teaching a workshop on biosignatures at the Whole Life Expo, which I understand anybody can participate in. You don't need to have any prior, uh, have taken any prior course in uh, biogeometry. Anybody can come. Anybody can come, yes. Yes. How did it come about that you discovered biosignatures? Because you're architects, you're both doctors of architecture. Well, let's look at it that way. I mean, subtle energy can be uh, accessed through different paradigms. In, in the modern uh, way that uh, all alternative sciences look at subtle energy, they look at it from, let's say, the duality point of view, uh, where any disturbance uh, is either an over-function or under-function of an organ, and then we look at the energy quality that will restore the balance. So you have one thing weighing in one side, you put another thing weighing on the other side, and you balance it that way. Now, in order to do that, the problem of dosage mm. is important. Otherwise, you create imbalance on the other side. Now, you ask yourself, well, if I go to a healing spot, to a sacred part spot, or to an ancient temple, or something like that, I can stay as long as I want. Why isn't this imbalance, or this dosage, law of dosage, active there? I mean, you'd expect if you stay too long, you, you get overdose. Uh, overdose. Right. Why isn't it there? So the moment you ask yourself that, so you say, well, maybe there are two types of balancing energy. There is the type that has to do with opposites. Mm -hmm. But then there's another type that has to do with what we call a centering process. A centering process where the word center means it's permanent balance. So imagine if you have a center of a circle. Yes. And you try, I tell you, try to locate the center. You have a point. Mm -hmm. But if you place your pen on that point, mm -hmm. I can make it bigger. And all of a sudden, even the center has a center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You find the second center, I make it bigger, and the center has a center. So actually, a true center is beyond time and space. It's transcendental. Yes. And anything that is transcendental, you cannot locate in time and space. The only way you can locate it is through its quality. And we find the center, of course, the most logical quality that everyone knows is the balancing quality. It's an ever balancing quality. So besides its transcendental, so you have the communicative part uh, thing, you have all the laws of nature coming in there, but a center 
by definition is something that keeps things permanently balanced. It's part of the laws of nature that puts balance in everything. So imagine now taking a center and then making through awareness, through resonance, making the quality of the center flow out and fill the whole circle. All of a sudden, you have an area that gives permanent balance to anything in there, irrelevant of dosage, irrelevant of anything. And that is what happens in sacred power spots where ancient architecture was built all the time. So as professors of architecture, we thought, well, maybe the circuit lies there. If we want to use a geometrical language to achieve this balance, maybe it was right there in front of our eyes in the energy quality of those places while we are teaching styles, you know, of architecture of the monuments, this style and that style and that style. Maybe the secret is not in the style. Maybe the secret is not in the Egyptian pyramid. Maybe it's not only in the pyramid shape. Maybe it's not in that construction. Maybe the pyramid shape is just the last remnant of man's interaction with this very, very important centering energy of the spot. So the subtle here becomes more important than the material. And all of a sudden, we are, as architects find ourselves, you know, in architecture we say, man is the measure of all things. The moment you're aware that man has emotional and has mental energy, all of a sudden, as an architect, you have to leave the material and go into all those dimensions. Oh. So this puts us in a new world with a completely new paradigm than the paradigm of uh, treatment or of energy medicine. It's a completely different architectural paradigm. From that paradigm, we develop a design language. And then where is the most advanced, the most perfect design language in nature? It's the design language of the human body. Mm. So automatically, this leads us to go with woe and admiration into the whole uh, design and shapes and the relation of shape to function of the human body and the human energy body and then find the patterns that uh, are in there. So that's our way into biosignature, but there's a very important point. Besides having a biosignature that resonates with the energy of an organ, you want at the same time the biosignature to carry the balancing energy like we have in a sacred power spot into that organ inside. Mm -hmm. So the biosignature has to connect mm -hmm. to a higher archetypal level, let's say to the template of every organ, mm -hmm. to the original perfect template of the organs of the human being. And from there, you make the connection. So in a way, first, the diagram promotes communication with the organ. And then the higher connection promotes the special energy balance, the higher spiritual aspect that balances that organ. I said, maybe yeah. that, that's long enough for explanation. Yes, and you know, you, you, yeah. you've, you've perhaps answered a question I had, which was biogeometry being a science of shape. I was going to ask, uh, why did you not, for example, just take a drawing of a perfectly and ideally shaped organ? Uh, for the shape resonance, but instead there's a pattern flowing. But is this pattern, uh, is this pattern uh, a part of the process that anchors the but archetypal there, there's energy? There's one step here. There is no perfectly shaped organ. We look at it that way. That's even if you look at the reliefs of ancient Egypt, where they drew everything in a stylized way. Yes. The stylized geometrical representation of the human body and the organs, this is the perfect organ. This is the perfect template of the human being on the archetypal level. Mm -hmm. When this template, those laws come into the physical level, mm -hmm. you have all the environmental physical interactions that results in all the myriads of different shapes of us human beings of the mm -hmm. physical world. It creates a lot of beauty, but at the same time, the slight departure from the perfect template causes a slight imperfection mm -hmm. that we live with in our dimension. Mm -hmm. Connecting this, the bisignature, once it connects, 
to the archetypal template, it produces, brings back the perfection on the energy level that was lost on the physical level. Mm -hmm. And that way it helps. Yeah. That's fascinating. And also Maybe we should 